What's up everyone? My name is Rebecca the Reseller. Thanks for joining me today for another viewer closet review. I am so excited to be doing this closet review. This is actually as usual. I had some tech issues in the second time I'm recording it, but I will dive back in again and enjoy her closet one more time to bring it to her and bring it to you. Hope you enjoy this video and are able to take something away from it to help you with your closet. And if you're interested in getting your own personalized closet review, let me show you where you can do it. This is my Etsy store. It's where I have all of my reseller tools and resources and swag available for you all the things that I use in my own business and all of the products I have for you. It's etsy.com slash shop slash Rebecca the reseller. It's linked down below in the description. I've got all sorts of listing. I'm in the process of redoing everything and kind of giving it a brand and a look and a feel and kind of revising all of my listings all of the tools that I have available, and then I'll start adding more products soon. So go ahead and favorite the shop right over here so that you don't miss a thing. Also, you can purchase a closet review right here we are, Poshmark closet review. It's listed at $25. I'm always having a sale of some kind, so you get a little discount that way. And you basically get a um, Google Sheet, multiple pages with all of the summary of all of my notes from the closet review. You get a personalized video, which is what I'm doing right now for at 13 threads. Her name is Camila, so thank you so much for purchasing this review. You get the um, video, you get the summary and then you also get like a sheet full of resources tools links that you can check out just all kinds of information that i've put together just to bring you some additional value so let's go ahead and dive right in i really enjoyed doing this closet review um it's 13 threads is her poshmark name her name is camila and again thank you so much for purchasing this i hope you get a lot out of it um and i'm excited to bring it to you so Diving right in, starting with your name field, which is where I always start, you have it already with an exclamation point at the beginning. That's one of the things that I recommend. So you have exclamation point 13 threads, which helps you show up higher in um, someone's followers list. So when people are doing follow sprees, they can go down the line and click all the people to follow them, and that will hopefully bring them more followers, and you'll show up at the top because you have the exclamation point. This is something I think is not a do or die, but definitely really helpful, and I'm glad you have that in your um, arsenal here. Your banner looks great. It's a nice, clean photo of clothing, so that's perfect. People can have whatever they want in their bookmarks, as long as it's not something that detracts from your closet, as long as it's not something messy or unprofessional. You can have anything in there. I think a picture of clothing is great. Um, I like your introduction line. I think that's great that you have, hi there, my name is Camila. That's awesome. This is prize real estate though, and so I do typically recommend offering um, a little bit of information to help boost customer confidence and make them want to buy from you, like ship same or next day, which I know you have mentioned elsewhere in your closet, and also something like how many packages you've sold. In mine, I have over 5,000 items sold. I still haven't gotten to change it. I've actually sold over 6,000 items, and I need to change that, but at least it lets people know that I ship same next day, and I'm a professional seller that's been selling for quite some time and sold a lot of packages. For you, the intro uh, line is nice, but you may want to at least mention ships same or next day or however many packages you've sold. I know you're a little bit newer, but I think that um, mentioning something like that is great along with saying hi. So that is perfect. Uh, the avatar, I like the picture of you. It's nice, it's clean, it's professional, it's of you. There's no negative here. So I think again, same with the banner, as long as it's not something that is taken away from your closet, as long as it's not something putting a bad taste in the buyer's mouth, it's good. Whether it's you, whether it's a logo, whatever, as long as it's nice, it's good. You have no link here and that's okay. Not everyone needs to have a link, but I did want to mention it. Should you ever want to promote your closet on Instagram? Should you ever start a YouTube channel? Should you ever make a link tree? That's where you would want to put it. Um, there's nothing here right now. And if you have nothing to promote your closet, that's okay too. You don't need to, um, but did want to at least make mention of it. As far as listings go, you've got all time 295 listings. So again, on the newer side, but at least it shows that you're not completely brand new. You've made some sales, you have some listings, and so at least you know what's going on. And so the only thing I would say, depending on what your goals are for yourself, maybe you want to make a milestone for yourself of hitting 500 total listings, and then from there go on to 1,000 and just take it in small chunks so that you always have a goal in front of you to shoot for. Um, I don't know what the ratio is between sold and 
I mean, I scrolled through, but I don't know the exact number of sold versus active. So depending on what your goals are for sales, you wanna at least be listing as many items as you would like sales. Not a tried and true, but a good guideline to give you. Obviously in the beginning, you may be selling less than what you're listing and that's okay. But over time, it should shake out if you're making the right listings and pricing them well and sharing your items you know, eventually the numbers are going to start to pull more in your favor. So depending on what you're looking for, I would say the next thing to look toward as far as listings going is to have 500 total listings. As far as your shares go, you're at about 2000. So I know that this is not the amount needed to break the milestone of becoming a Poshmark ambassador. If that's something that you're interested in hitting, then you may want to take a weekend and share a whole lot and try to knock out that 5,000 community shares. You may wanna set a small daily goal for yourself. I do think having Poshmark ambassador is helpful to give the buyer confidence so that they know that certain criteria have been met. I don't think it's necessarily going to increase your sales per se um, just by having it, but I do think that buyers look to kind of know that a Poshmark ambassador is at least someone that has been around the block, knows what they're doing, and is okay. That's not the only thing. We know that there are plenty of Poshmark ambassadors out there that are not doing exactly what they should be. But I think that if you are caring about becoming a Poshmark ambassador, you may want to just take a weekend or two, knock out those 5,000 shares. I do think in the beginning, community shares are more beneficial to you because it gets that exposure out there for your closet. It helps build your network because you're going to share. Perhaps they're going to share back. Perhaps you're going to get followers from the shares that you put out. Perhaps they share you back and then you get more followers and shares from there, perhaps sales. So, I mean, it's all about branching everything out into the web of Poshmark and not necessarily expecting a direct result back. But if you have some time, community shares are great. I wouldn't make it the most prioritized thing on your list. Doing your own shares and doing your own listings are always going to be the top thing to do. So. Uh, let's see, followers and following, you're at about 10,000 followers, a little more, you're at about 9,000 following. Usually it's the opposite, people have more following than followers, which means that you're not wasting your time trying to get followers by following other people. And I think that's okay. I do recommend from time to time to do a follow spree because again, it just helps get that exposure out there. Don't waste a lot of time on it, but if you happen to be in the passenger seat of a car or waiting in line at the grocery store, share a few items, follow a few closets. If you're watching Netflix at night, follow a few closets. I think the most bang for your buck is in following the new poshers and the new closets. I have a whole video which I've recommended here and we'll link down below on all of the tactics that I've used to um, get more followers. And I have almost 400,000 now, I'm really excited about that. So, you know, it's a number, it's a vanity thing. I like getting more followers it doesn't necessarily mean more sales, but I do think, again, building your exposure, building your network of closets so that when you do share items, it goes out into a bigger reach and network can never be a bad thing. So that is that. Um, last active. So this is the second time I'm doing it, which means it's the third time that I'm in your closet. I make the the summary first, then I record it. Since that recording didn't work out, now I'm back in it again. So it looks here like you were last active four hours ago, which is a relatively fine amount of time. The last time that I had looked out, you were recently active within the hour. So I know that you're on the app and you're being active. So that's great. And it just gives the buyer confidence that you will be around to ship out their item if they purchase it or answer a question if they have one or that you're just someone that is paying attention and it is an active account. Now your average ship time for being new is great. You have same day, which is awesome and coveted. So keep that up. It will definitely benefit you over time. Um, I did a whole video about boosting buyer confidence. I'll link that below. I may reference it a few times. And in there, I explain in more depth about how having a really good ship time in the beginning can benefit you over your Poshmark career and really pay off in the end. Um, so, I definitely would recommend checking that out if you're interested because I don't wanna go into all of that here. But the ship time is great, so congratulations on that. Keep it up, keep shipping out those packages same day and it will be a, a big benefit to you. As far as posture since, it looks like you've been on the app since July of 2019, so a little under a year at this point and you may or may not have started seriously, you may or may not have you know been doing it continuously all along. I do think for being on the app at that time, 
you might want to be further along with the amount of listings that you have if you're someone that is really trying to make daily sales and kind of increase the money that you make and the things that you sell on Poshmark you might want to do a little bit more production a little bit more input so you get a more bigger output um, so that's just something to think about but at least it shows that you're not brand new so that's really all you can say with that now I do want to dive in and spend a little time what am I doing um, spend a little time on your closet sign. So first of all, at first glance, they're gorgeous. They're really well designed, really beautiful. You may have used an app, you may have done it yourself, I don't know, but they're gorgeous, nice, bright, clean, clear, excellent. So offers always welcome, great to say, love that. I do have a few notes on this. So when you click into it, mm -mm, mm -mm. You've got nothing in the title. I would totally use this as an opportunity to say something else because they can see the title from the other screen. And so they don't need to click into it in order to see more information. Like you have same day or next day shipping here, but they wouldn't see that unless they click into the listing, which really they have no reason to do. If you put that as your title, they would see it from the prior screen and that would just get that information out there all the better. So if you had it here in your title, they'd see that. So that would be a big recommendation. I think that would be a nice touch. Um, offers always welcome, same next day shipping. That's great, it's perfectly good information. Um, I don't really think you need anything in the description, but it is a good opportunity to actually introduce yourself and tell them about you or to just, you know, say that I'm a professional seller. I'm looking to get your package out to you as quickly as possible. I ship same next day. Just have a little blurb about you and about your business is fine. And for, for those that do click into it, they'll be able to read that. But I do think that having the most important information, which is same or next day shipping, should go in your title. Also, this isn't necessarily a bookmark sign. So the only other alternative to what you're doing, and you may then change the picture or whatever, is that it's not a really a bookmark sign because it doesn't say like this to bookmark my closet. No one has really liked it, just one person. So if you said in the title, instead of the shipping, like to bookmark, then maybe you'd get more likes on it, more people would bookmark your closet and they would come back from time to time to remember you. Um, but since you're not saying that anywhere, you're not telling them to do that. So if you don't have another one to bookmark your closet, because I am a big proponent of having a closet bookmark sign, you may want to turn this into that in some way, whether you add it in the title or you add it in the picture or something. Moving on from there, the next one, three for 25 sale, which is great. Everybody loves these kinds of sales. I saw you have a lot of things marked. You're not using an emoji. You're just using the three for 25, which is fine. I do have a couple thoughts. One is you should make the sign $25. Couple reasons for that instead of $20. If you put it as 25, it will show up in under 25 and it will show up in 25 to 50 if someone is sorting by price by just having it at the $25 price point. So it gets you double the amount of exposure for your sign when you share it. Also, it's the same price as the sale, which I think, you know, just makes it whatever. Now, for the three for 25 sale, here's a tip that I haven't mentioned before. I've done this in the past in my own closet for certain things, and then I've just recently realized that you could do this with a sale, and now I'm going to start doing it in my closet as well. Just haven't had a chance. So I think you should have a sale hashtag for your closet. And that way, in the listing, you can add the hashtag. And so when you direct someone to search listings for that hashtag, all of the items included in the sale will come up. Let me show you what I mean. Because right now, especially as your closet gets larger, it's harder for people to find these listings. You're not using an emoji, so they actually do have to read the title in order to find out what's marked three for 25. So. Right now, you know, if I scroll down, you do have most of them at the top of your closet, but I did see yesterday um, when I was in here, some of them were close to the bottom. So if you were in a listing and you just added like a hashtag right here at the bottom of the listing, let me show you what it can do. So I recently, or I have for quite some time, used hashtags to help me determine when I listed items. And so I do O O M R for on my rack 0520. So these are the listings. Oh, and I need to put the hashtag. 
Um, these are the listings that I listed this month. So these all have in the listing this hashtag, hashtag OMR0520. And so that hashtag is in the description of every single one of these items. And so you can just easily pull up all of the things that I've listed with that hashtag this month. And I used to do that for a bunch of different reasons. But so let's say that you change this hashtag to hashtag 13 threads sale or whatever you wanted to come up with, but something that was unique to your closet and had sale in it or clearance or whatever. Um, then you could add that hashtag to your sign, tell people search this hashtag in the listings and you'll find all of my listings that come up for the sale. And that way they see everything on one page. They know everything is a part of the sale and then they can just filter from there their size, that they're looking for a top, that they want shoes, whatever it is. So that's a tip that I haven't released before, but I thought this was a good opportunity to do it. And I use it and I've used it for a lot of different things, um, but I think using it for a sale would really be helpful and that's what I'm gonna start doing in my closet. So that is that. Um, now, as far as, I think that was the only thing for signs. I think that was it on the signs. Oh, you can promote your sale in the free Facebook group that I um, created, and there's a link down in the description below. It's called Poshmark Deals and Sales, and it's just a place for sellers to post a link to their sign for a sale, and it's a place where buyers can go to look at what sales are available, because I think that it's hard to find a sale on Poshmark, and sometimes I am looking for a deal, and I wanna see what's there, and I'm looking to see who has a five for 25, who has a three for 25, whatever, and so I created the Facebook group so buyers could find the sale and sellers could post the sale. So that may be something you want to check out as well. Now, let's talk about your product mix as far as brand and size. You've got a great wide array of brands that are in demand, high medium, you know, kind of high end, medium end. Um, to the lower end, you've covered women's, men's, kids, and even home. Um, so you have a nice mix of items as far as category and all of that even as well as brands, I do think and I recommend to most people that you should always be challenging yourself to find as many home run items as you can. Items over $50, items over $100. Um, I don't know what your sourcing situation is and so obviously it's different for everyone, but I do issue that challenge to all so that over time, as you collect these longer tail home run items, when they pay off and someone buys it, you get a really nice bump and that allows you to make more investments in your business or pay yourself a little bit extra that month. And when you are doing it for a while, those collect. And so every so often, once a month, once every two months or more often, if you have more, you get those home run sales and it really gives a boost to your overall sales for the month. So I do believe in over time collecting those higher end items that can pay off for you over time as well as having the mix of lower end items. Um, so I do think you have a good brand mix of, of brands. I do think that you could add plus size if you wanted to expand the reach of your closet. All of the items that you have, except for like two or three, seemed to be in the regular size range. So if you want to kind of bulk up in the 1X, 2X, 3X area, you can always have an increased reach with your closet. I love carrying plus size. So I definitely think that that's something that could help you out. Um, you have a great selection of occasions and styles. You've got swim, you've got, you know, workout stuff, you've got leggings, you have leather things, you have jeans, you have dresses, you have everything for all seasons, all categories, um, you know, casual workwear, all of that. So I like to see that. I think it's nice because it doesn't make your business seasonal at all. It doesn't only cater to one person. I don't necessarily think a curated closet is the way to go in the beginning. And so I think by having a wide array, it <laughs> gives you all the options to sell more things. So I think you have a nice diversified closet. I didn't notice any prohibited items. So that is good. Pictures, oh my gosh, your pictures are great. You have done such an awesome job with your pictures, whether it's a flat lay or whether it's a hanging, everything is brightly lit is presented well, is folded nicely, laid out nicely, is hanging nicely, nothing is out of place. It looks like you care for each and every item and paid attention to detail. And that is 
one of the big things and one of the easiest things that I think people can do to improve their closet and increase buyer confidence, and I mentioned this in that video that I did, um, don't change a thing with your pictures. It looks great. Now, lighting is great as well, so that's usually another kind of point that I talk about with people, but I don't have to with you. As far as the number of photos, you're taking all the photos that you need. We just recently got the increase now on Poshmark to have 16 photos, so this is awesome, and I think that was a deterrent for people previously to not be able to have as many pictures, but now you can. You have a great amount. You're taking the top and the bottom and the, and the tags and all of it, so I'm not gonna click into that, but just know that you're taking the right amount of photos, you're covering all of those details, and that is great. Um, for your pricing, though, I do think over time you kind of get a feel for items and prices. I also think that you choose to um, comp certain things over other things, like some is more worth your time to comp and check for solds and see what the good price should be. I encourage you at the beginning to be doing as much of that as you can find time for. I think that will help you get a better feel for pricing overall. I felt like aside from your three for 25 sale, you have some items that could command a higher price at a lower price. And then you have some items that are just kind of run of the mill basic brands, but you have at a kind of high price, I thought. Now, obviously you could have been dropping prices. You may wanna leave room for offers. You may have a very aggressive strategy for offers to likers. I don't know all of those things just by looking at your closet. So you may have a plan in place, but I make mention of that to just say, if you're not sure, the best bet is to go through solds so search for the item that you have, search for it, sort by solds, look at a bunch of them and see what the middle of the road is, what that average is, and maybe price five or $10 higher so that you can account for offers, maybe 15, 20 higher if you want to be the person that's sending out aggressive offers. Have kind of a bottom line in your mind and a top line in your mind, and that's how you can price your items perhaps a little bit more close to market. The other thing, and we'll talk about it when I get into it, into the thing, is to be letting your solds guide you as well. So we'll get to that later. So that's pricing. Your titles, I thought, were great. Um, you know, you're hitting all the major points. The only thing that kind of jumped out at me, which for Poshmark, it doesn't matter. I think I, the only reason I think about it is because of other platforms like eBay, let's say, um, is not putting the size in your title. But again, the size will obviously pull up because of Poshmark search and it's here and so you can see it. Um, but normally I'm just in the habit of saying like free people floral button front blouse M for medium. Um, you could add a couple more, not so much to the title, but what, as we get into the description, we'll talk about keywords there. But I think that your titles are hitting all of the key points. So great job with that. For the description, let's we'll pull this one up. I clicked into a few yesterday, but now I don't want to go <laughs> scrolling to find those exact listings. Um, Anthropology Cartonnier fitted pencil career skirt in gray color, size 10, pre-owned in very good condition. Okay, so in general, I think you could have more information in your description. These are pretty short. It's okay, some people prefer to have a, a minimalist approach. I think whatever your personal preference is on description, you should have a template. And so in general, from clicking through a bunch of your listings, I think you kind of do, um, but it's not necessarily like a form where I, I do a form sometimes, or I used to, now I'm kind of getting away from it to make it a little bit more clean and clear. But um, you know, sometimes you can copy and paste the title in um, and then add some additional keywords to better describe the item and also have it come up more in search. So like with this one, you can add, you know, the ruching on the side. You can add um, if it's lined or not. You can add, but this is kind of a basic skirt, but you know, other things that you wanna add for different items. Again, I clicked into a bunch of different ones yesterday, so I had other keywords in mind when I was doing that. Um, you could know where the zipper is, that there's ruching, you know, are there panels, are there pleats, is there a kick pleat in the back, you know, all of those kinds of things. So one of the things that I make mention of is that Daily Refinement always says, Chris, he says, describe your item like there's no pictures and take pictures like there's no description. And I think that that's a great thing to keep in the back of your mind is that you can always add more words to describe the item. And if those words are also searchable keywords, it will not only help you in 
giving the person a nice feel in the description, but then also helping you in search pull up under a multitude of searches because you never know what people are going to use to search the item that they're finding. Everybody calls things something different. Some people call things what they mean, but then they say something else in their search. You never know. So I think just covering a, a wide array of appropriate keywords is always a better thing. Um, the other thing on condition is you have pre-owned, which is great, and then you have very good condition. I did notice on some other listings it said excellent, on some others it said good, this is the issue that I have in general with condition because it's like what I say is very good versus what I say is excellent is subjective to me. You may not know which is better or worse of those two. So I think making a note of that it's pre-owned is good and that it's excellent, good, very good condition, whatever you want to say. But then also adding a line um, or a couple of words about having no flaws. And that way it just kind of seals the deal to the buyer that there's nothing wrong with this, that you've checked it and you're saying there's nothing wrong with it. There's no pilling, there's no stains, there's no tears, there's no holes. And some people actually list all of that out. I think that's too much. Um, I don't personally do that. I just say with no flaws and I feel like that covers me. And so that would just be my only criticism there on the condition part is just perhaps noting that there are no flaws when there are no flaws and then when there are actually listing them out. And that way you just kind of cover your butt there. Um, you do have measurements in some of your listings, <laughs> but not in all of your listings. And that could be that maybe you started with no measurements and then decided to add them. Or maybe there's just certain items that you don't want to do measurements for. I measure basically everything. I think measurements should always be in there just to cover your butt again, to give, you know, buyer confidence and to also cut down on questions. Um, so if you have not put measurements in everything, I think you should. And if it's not your practice going forward, I think it should be, my opinion. I, I do think it helps. The other thing I would recommend here is to add a line about buyer confidence. This is something I talked about in great detail in that Boost Buyer Confidence video that I recently did. And it's just putting a line at the bottom that would say, professional seller, ship same next day, offers welcome, packaged with care, heart for price drops, bundle and save XYZ percent. Just a little line at the bottom to kind of tie up all the loose ends, answer any questions, be a little salesy, and let them know everything that they can expect from you as a seller. So I would highly recommend adding a line like that at the bottom of all of your listings. One other note on the measurements. Here, weigh 16 inches flat length. Okay, so I mean, for that, that's fine. I have started to take measurements on a form-fitting skirt like this um, or dress. I have started to take the hips measurements. I have was getting a lot of questions, and so I did add that as part of my system a while back. So that would also be a recommendation to you as you may want to consider a hips measurement on certain items. Also, there was a pair of pants. I don't remember which it was, but I have it in my notes that the measurements were mixed up, like the inseam was listed as eight inches and then the rise was listed as like 27 inches. So I'm sure that was just a mistake and inversion, but you may just want to switch that, make sure that the measurements are correct so that you don't leave yourself open to any issue with, you know, a case or something like that. Uh, let's see. Okay. So that was all I had on the descriptions. I mean, like I said, in general, I feel like you are very much on the right track with most of it. I think the heavy lifting that you need to do is not in your photos or your lighting is really in your descriptions and your details like that. So those are easy fixes. You just have to make the decision to do it. Um, so I'm happy that, that that's all that it is for you there. When I said, let your sold be your guide, I'm going to click in your sold. You can just get a feel for like what things are going for higher prices and what things are going for lower prices. Like here you've got an American Eagle, blah, 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 American Eagle high rise jegging $15. Like for me, I think that is kind of where it needs to be. It's just American Eagle. It's not anything crazy. And so $15 is kind of around the price point. I mean, that's where I would be not pricing it, but I would price it a little bit higher so that it could end at 15. I know that there are some people that do sell American Eagle for a lot more and that's fine, but I don't think that that's the norm. Um, you know, your, your sneakers are a different thing. I don't do a lot of shoes, so I couldn't say, you know, rag and bone getting 30, you, maybe you could get more, maybe not. 
It's a size 25, but you know, that is gonna be a higher price point. Forever 21, $12, that's your price point. BDG, $9, you know, somewhere in there, that's fine. So I think where your solds end up is kind of something that should help inform where your pricing can start. And that way you kind of see what's what. And you know, honestly, I'm just looking at this Brooks Brothers. I just had Brooks Brothers sell in my five for 25 sale because it just, it's a very expensive brand. It should be selling for higher. I don't know what's going on with it, but I am almost basically finished with it at this point. Um, I'm finished with all men's items, but I, ju I just happened to see that. I was like, see, you couldn't even sell them either. So it's not just me. It's not just you. It's just the market for men's Brooks Brothers right now on Poshmark, you know, and maybe if it was a different platform, it would go completely differently. But in this particular snapshot in time, Brooks Brothers is just not selling well for men's for us. Something to note. Um, last shared. So let's go back and see because I Okay, so it's basically the same. When I did the summary, and then when I did the video yesterday for the first time, and now again, you're at a long time since you've shared your items. I think you should be sharing your items more. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know if you have kids. I don't know if you've got a full-time job or what's going on, um, but you can't expect to you know, really get a lot of sales, get consistent daily sales, have a high sales volume from Poshmark if you're not doing the things that are going to lead you there. And one of the things that are going to lead you there is sharing your items more often than you currently are. Each time I've clicked into your closet, it's been 10 plus hours since you have shared your items. So that's almost a half a day. That leads me to believe that perhaps you're not sharing your items more than once a day. If that's the case, it's fine, you do you, but then you can't expect to have a lot of sales off of sharing once a day. You've gotta be sharing, I highly recommend, especially for your size closet, three to five times a day, if not more, if you could. You know, at 295 total listings, and that includes your sold, you could easily share your closet probably in 20 minutes or less. So I think that, um, Think you need to share your items more i think that would be a world of difference for you if you did try it twice a day if that you know whatever try it three times a day evenly spaced out um you know try sharing around party times if you want to kind of make that as a guideline for yourself but i mean i share at least three times a day uh, if you have trouble with it, try share bursts, which are basically just going in whenever you have a few minutes and sharing a few items to the top of your closet. So like when Gio was little, I used to do this with listing because it was hard for me to get on my phone and list. And I think it might have even been before they had web access to list. I don't even remember. It was a while ago and I was sleep deprived. But <laughs> like, you know, I when I would put them in the car seat in the car and then I would get in the front seat to go drive before I pulled out of the driveway, I would list an item. I already had the photos on my phone. I already had all the information. I would just get the listing up. Then whenever we arrived at our destination before I took him out of the car seat, I listed another item because I knew he was contained. I knew I had couple of minutes in the car where it wouldn't make a big deal if I did this listing. And so you could do that with sharing. I don't know what your listing habit is, but at least if you're sharing the items you have, they'll be higher in search. You'll have more chances to make a sale when people are searching for something where your item could come up. And right now, it's probably not. It, the shares get pushed down so quickly that if you're not sharing a few times a day, um, I just don't know that you would make the sales. So just really, I, I can't say it enough. Um, answering questions, I noticed on every listing that you did have a question, you answered it, so that's great. I always like to make a note of that because if you're not answering questions, that's not a good thing. So you are doing great with that. Um, you have a 10% bundle discount. I usually do 20% off of two. You can always up it if you want. 10% off of two is fine, at least you offer it. Maybe you do more with bundling and offers that way. Um, but those are all the main categories and criteria that I looked at. I do think in general, the closet from a closet view looks great. You're doing a great job with the photos. As I said, you've got a wide array of things, um, brands, price point, styles, etc. I think you need to focus on the nitty gritty of your descriptions and sharing. <laughs> those are my big things for you. Share, share, share. 
Uh, work on your descriptions a little bit, come up with a nice template for yourself, add that buyer confidence line at the end and give them a little bit of information on what to expect. And I think if you shared your items two or three more times than you are, you will definitely see an increase in sales. So those are all of the thoughts that I have for you. I really hope that you can implement a lot of those things and that you will have a wonderful increase in sales as a result of it. Go ahead and check out the summary I'm gonna give you, as well as all of the resources and information. And for those watching at home, I hope that you are able to get a little tip, get a little nugget, something that you can implement in your closet. And if you're interested in getting a personalized, customized closet review for me, I'm very detail oriented, I really get into it, and I really wanna see you succeed. So I would love it if you would check out my closet review listing on Etsy. Again, it's listed down below. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I do appreciate it. Like this video on your way out. Go ahead and subscribe if you can, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.